we are not going to talk about uh, uh, the regular supraconda humerus fracture where we are having the vascular or neurological injuries. You know, uh, some different perspective of the cases I'm, I just want to pre uh, present. This is a nine-year male child who had a displaced uh, fracture, uh, supraconda humerus type 3 injury. And uh, it is common that in our scenario that they usually present late, so five days after injury. And there is no neurovascular deficit, right? So what should be the treatment protocol naturally? We like to go for the close reduction. So now this was a picture after three attempts of close reduction I tried, it failed. And this is a picture. So how to proceed now? How many will go for the open reduction can raise the hand? Or some for the mini invasive technique or something like? Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, you can still, when particularly when there is no neurovascular injury, you can just try a few of this mini invasive technique where you just take a knee at the midline or just lateral to the midline and just put a blunt suction tip, not a sharp tip, this blunt suction tube where as soon as you put it, the hematoma comes out and with the uh, coming out of the hematoma, the compartment pressure becomes reduced. And once the pressure is reduced, the reduction becomes very easy, right? So this was a, if you see on the corner, first corner, this was irreducible fracture. As soon as I put the suction tube, the hematoma came out and the, you can use the same tube as a joystick, right? So you can uh, reduce the fracture very well. And then in the uh, regular manner, either if you are want to fix laterally or by cross pin, whatever method of surgery is comfortable, you can fix them and they heal well like this. So simple, uh, I mean mini laser technique can give uh, result like this. This technique we uh, published way back in 2005 in the Acta Orthopedic Scandinavica. Now this is the second case, where is a baby girl who presented at 10 days after birth. So it's a birth injury, it's a supracondyl humerus fracture. We call it as a physial separation of the lower at the lower end of the humerus and that's, it is there. Now many times it can be, I mean, uh, if you palpate, you can just diagnose it very well. If you have difficulty, you can, maybe you can diagnose by the help of the sonography or you can do the orthorom. What, how you, you are going to manage this? There is a physial separation, supracondyl humerus fracture. What does the literature say? For the initial presentation for three or four days, you can manage by simply putting the orthogram, die, and manage closely and put a wires. But particularly for these late presenting, like 10 days, 12 days, literature says there are only few articles that just leave alone and it should remodel. It should remodel, right? And there are two, three papers which mention that. We decided to conserve. We just gave the slab, right? And after three weeks, we removed the slab. Patient lost to follow-up after a long time and she presented after eight years again. Now this, uh, gross virus deformity which is there, right? And naturally I had to correct this at eight years and this is after correct osteotomy, right? That is there. Now another case, now the baby is 12 days old. This is the presentation. There is again the fracture supraconda humerus, that is a physial separation. 12 days baby, right? There was a trauma at the time of birth. This is an x-ray and you can see the closer look. There is a callus, right? Can everybody appreciate? There is a callus which has already started forming. The parents' expectations are very high. Mother and father both are doctors. They have come after two of my colleagues, then they have come to me. They, they are not willing to accept the deformity, right? So what is the opinion of the house? How, how we should go up? Are we going to just accept the deformity? Just wait and watch? With the previous case where I burned my fingers, I thought I will do the extensive research or the literature of the search again. And, and I, I found that there was only one article, even Japanese article, where they have studied 21 physical separation and they found and 17 years of the follow-up, this Japanese article, 15 they had a cubitus virus deformity. And they suggested, this was a review literature and they said ki, might be some kind of open reduction might be required, you know, that was a suggestion. So I tried first with a joystick manual, it was not possible, so I minimally open it and I reduced it, close, uh, I mean, uh, uh, reduced it and fix it. After three weeks, the KYS were removed and this is follow-up at four months, right? There is a full range of movement. I think if you are, if you are corrected deformity, I, I am not giving the blanket statement that each and every baby you are going to operate, you know, because for operating a 12 days baby, it requires a good backup also. We are fortunate that we have pediatric anesthesiologist with us. I think Sandeep is, is, is good backup with good anesthetically, you are listening to the talk, right? So where good anesthetists are available handling the baby of 12 days old and good backup of the pediatrician, there this is possible, right? So that is there. So the take home message from this, some, some different uh, aspects of the supraconda humerus is each fracture is dif different. 
so repeated attempts of close reduction in a severe displaced fracture you can cause more harm so you should try for the few of the mini invasive technique that should be there and naturally mini invasive technique if you are suspecting a neurovascular injury or the vascular injury you should not wiggle it again and again you can go for the other other methods like that and the very important point is surgeon should take the decision according to the situations to have the best outcome unless until you are not causing any harm i thank you for your kind attention